I think for this interview, I'd like to just kind of talk a little bit more about about uh, Philip Bogus the man and your education <laughs> and background. Okay. Um, wonderful things I think can be expected of you in the future. Already, you have now uh, this year two books out: one on the tragedy of the euro, one on the Iceland experience, the definitive work on Iceland. The tragedy of the euro has become a bestseller uh, in our world, and already at this conference we've uh, we've sold all the copies that we have. So, uh, you teach at uh, Juan Carlos Rey in Madrid, is that yeah. right? Universidad Rey Juan Carlos. Yeah. Okay, and uh, and uh, you're a colleague of Jesus Huerta de Soto. Yeah, I owe him. I owe him a lot. Yes, but you're only thirty years old. Yes. Okay. You came to us when you were 20 years old, you said, uh, at the Mises University. So I recall so well um, when you came, uh, maybe it wasn't that summer, maybe it was the next summer, but uh, I took notice, notice of you amongst the sea of students because um, you're the only one that could sit down at our Imperial Bosendorf and play Bach. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're also a concert pianist of sorts. <laughs> so, well, I'm not, not so good, yeah, but I remember that. I remember that also, yeah. yeah. It was the first and second year. Actually, I then I was still still good, but <laughs> then it's all downhill from there. So you there. left your piano t uh, talents to languish while you studied economics? Yeah, I had no piano. <laughs> For many years, I did not have a piano. Okay. Only last September, I bought one. Okay. And now okay. I'm, I'm slowly coming back. Well, now that you're coming into your own as an economist, maybe you'll pick it up again someday. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, I'm practicing now. Okay, good. That's good. Um, uh, where were you studying economics when you came to Mises University? You were in Germany, right? I was still in Germany. Uh, Münster. Münster. Münster in Westphalia, mm -hmm. where this Rosbach describes, uh, tells about Münster in his history of economic thought, you know, what's this communist oh, experiment, yeah. right? So Münster is famous because of this. The first great experience ex experimenting in, in communism. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and eventually, it's like Gaddafi today or something. They had to throw the guy out, right? They had to invade the town and toss him out or something. I can't yeah, remember they, the details. They, they, kill, they, they tortured and killed them. Actually, they have still the cages up on the tower on the church. There are still three cages. Of where the dictators are. Uh, yeah, where the, where the, the leaders yeah, were hanged. Uh, two assistants. <laughs> this was the 15th century? Uh, uh, 15th or 16th, I think. 16th century, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the great chapters. So um, w w your uh, attachment to economics as a science is very intense, and that's obvious to anybody who reads your work or listens to your lectures. When did it begin in your life? Your love for economics. Um, when I when I read Ro Rothbard, I think I was still in high school. What did you read in German or English? In in German, <clears throat> I read uh, the Ethics of Liberty. Mm -hmm. Where this is more libertarian. Um, I read Mises' Bureaucracy. There's a there's a translation li liberalism. There's a translation. Oh, well, it's liberalism, it's the original edition, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the original, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and from there it started, then I read Heslet, Man, Economy and State, National Economy. But you entered into a very conventional economics program, highly mathematized, highly Keynesian, no? Yeah, Keynesian, yes, maybe not as ma mathematized as other programs, though. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, there's the order liberal school in Germany, which yeah. is still opposed to mathematization, I think it has got to become worse over the years. I think now it would be worse. Yeah. Or more social social democratic or, or more mathematized. More mathematized. And the order liberal schools politics today are No, they are still on the same line as ten years ago, but their influence has been fallen because the mathematical school is rising in influence. I see. And then you finished your undergraduate, and then you went on to st straight to your PhD? Well, I, because here someone, I think Gabriel Cazara, recommended me to go to Madrid to study with Jesus Huerta de Soto. Mm, I did the Erasmus year in Madrid, Erasmus program, mm -hmm. this is an exchange program for U European universities. Mm -hmm. 
So I did that in 2003, 2004. And then I returned to finish my master in, in Germany. And afterwards I did the PhD in... At Münster? Yes. Okay. I did the master at Münster. Is this where your family is? Close, close to Münster, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, this is in East Germany today, and... Uh, no, it's West Germany. It's West Germany. I thought you said it, Münster was... So it shows what I know about the German geography, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Typical American, right? <laughs> okay. You can improve on that. Yeah, you? well, I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so now you're 30, and you have a professorship, and um, you teach how many classes? Well, if Five or six, six or seven. Mm -hmm. And you teach in Spanish? Spanish and English. Everything you want. <laughs> Everything you want. German, <laughs> Spanish, English. What else? Nothing else. That's French? It. No, no A French. little bit? No. You can understand it? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could read it probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, European academics... Um, are very different from Americans. Americans know one language and one language only. And, and only a little bit of that one. Only a little bit of But for most of them, it's sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, now, um, so, so you've done these two marvelous books, and they came they came as a as a as a surprise to us when they when they arrived. I mean, I didn't. I, I'm not sure I was expecting them. The tragedy of the Euro book, in particular, changed the mind of your own professor, Huerta de Soto, who had been up to then a supporter of the European uh, Currency Union, right? Because he thought it was the most liberal so solution. Well, he still is kind of a supporter. Uh -huh. I changed it only a little bit. I see. <laughs> he still thinks that... He agrees with me that, of course, for German, he said if he would be German, he would be against the Euro. <laughs> but as he is a Spaniard, <laughs> as he is a Spaniard, because he, he says that otherwise the uh, Spanish uh, peseta would have devalued and it would have been worse for Spain. Yeah. Which yeah. Might, might be the case. But for the future of Euro as a whole, I think it's, it's worse. Yeah. Do you expect the Euro to be uh, in the news in the future, within the next year or two? Uh, yeah, more so. It will continue because the problem is not is not solved. Yeah. We have yet uh, in in March we have a, a summit, and markets markets expect that they will extend the rescue fund, the bailout mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. they, they will probably do it because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise they, 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 it would explode because no one would buy any more of these Portuguese and Spanish yes. Spanish bonds. You know, I'm thinking about Austrians who have written about this topic, and the name Pascal Salin comes to mind, right? Long before there was a European currency unit, he, he had written on this topic. I think so, yes, yes. but I don't remember. Uh, okay. Um, are there other thinkers who influenced you? Uh, Guido Holzmann, right? Yeah, Guido, Guido has a good, <coughs> good mentor. Had be, has been a good mentor to me yes. when I was here. Mm -hmm. And what other Austrians in the history of thought do you, uh, are you drawn to? Rothbard, Mises, Hayek? Well, Hayek, Hayek less. Mm -hmm. Hayek less. He's not such a clear thinker as Mises or Rothbard. Right. He doesn't write as, as clear as, as they do. Yes, well, that's true. Um, even his English is, is less. Uh, clear than uh, probably Rothbard reads in German, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, now that you've finished these two books, and Iceland, by the way, is back in the news. There was some story yesterday about uh, the banks. I, I just saw the headline. I didn't actually read it. So, uh, And that book is doing well. And you co-wrote this with David Howden. Yes. Yeah. How did you manage that co-writing thing? Did you just send it back and forth? Or you... oh, we did uh, per chapters. Uh -huh. I think otherwise it would be impossible to do. Yeah. Like some chapters I did, some chapters he did. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and then of course we send it yeah. to each other. Well, um, I think it's the only book length uh, treatment of the, of the topic which is so important because you establish the relationship between the events there and Austrian business cycle theory uh, in a very, very nice way. What is on your agenda now? What are you planning on? What's your next book? going to be about? 
your next papers? What are they? What are you researching now? That uh, it's a secret. I won't tell you. <laughs> it's going to be like your last two books. They just arrived. Yeah. <laughs> No, actually, I'm working now on the German translation of the Eurobook because obviously, oh, sure. for Germany, it will be it's a perfect market, no, for it. Yeah. And yeah, there are also other translations coming out in, in Slovak and in Polak, Pol, Pol, Polish, already I- Italian and Spanish. Um, but it's being prepared. Well, I mean, should I be outraged that nobody wrote me for permission? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They wrote me for permission. Oh, they wrote you for permission. Okay. Well, the idea is that, of course, we publish into the comments, so it's also available online, and anybody can translate it into any language. And this is this is all this is all to the good. It should be in. So I'm actually updating some parts of it. Okay. And uh, have you gotten some attention from uh, uh, the press, from newspapers, and things like this yet, for your views yet? No, oh, yeah. the mainstream media is not so much interested. Not so interested. Um, have you seen other interest in the English version of your tragedy, the Euro? I mean, among colleagues and friends in Germany and uh, Spain. Yeah, yes, um, fr- from our, from the Austrian, in the Austrian circles, of course, also in the investment circles, ah, yeah. many people, some, some investment managers, comment, comment to other. F- to friends of mine that they have read it, even though I don't know them. So yeah. there are many people apparently reading it. Yes. Well, um, it was reviewed at the Cobden Institute site. And uh, it, it was very interesting for me to re- re- to read, I think it's Andrew Duncan's review, because uh, now he had fresh eyes, right? I mean, I had been involved very deeply uh, in the manuscript during the editing stage. I didn't edit it uh, Myself, I think Arlene O'Sinner edited the book, but I followed it um, throughout the process. And so when the review came out, and it was so over the top, I mean, he just loved the book. Uh, he, and the uh, enthusiasm was for your manuscript was palpable. Um, so it was, a, it was nice for me because it confirmed something I had suspected, that uh, not only is the book a wonderful book, but that the man who wrote the book is a, a brilliant young Austrian. So um, we're all very excited about uh, your work so far and what you will do in the future. What's it like for a German living in Spain? It's marvelous. It's sunny. It's not raining. <laughs> you can sleep until 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this is good. It's like being on vacation your whole life. <laughs> Have you? Um, do you speak Spanish all the time, and in, in Spain? I mean, to everybody. Uh, yes. Yeah. yes. And do you think in Spanish yet, or more and more? Yeah, more and more. I uh, think in Spanish. Uh, do your students say that the, your Spanish is good? Well, they understand me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't complain anymore. <laughs> in the beginning, they like, <laughs> they complain, but not anymore. And you do you dream in Spanish? I mean, uh, is Spain your new home? Well, I'm. I don't remember my dreams, so okay. I'm not sure. So you're not sure. <laughs> I don't in which language I dream. Okay. But I'm one of those people, persons that don't remember their dreams. Okay. Do you uh, have you gone to? Um, were, were you at our Salamanca conference? Yes. Oh, you were. Yeah. And. Uh, was that before you were teaching at the university? No, it was after. long after. Yeah, yeah. I started in two thousand seven. Yeah. So in Spain, here we have, a, in a way, uh, the birthplace of economic science. In some ways, the birthplace of modernity itself, right? Spain. So uh, it's a wonderful place for an economist to be. Yeah. The place where it all began. Yeah. How far is Cordoba from uh, from Madrid? It's it's a way. A long way. I, I haven't I haven't been there. Yeah, and Salamanca is over there on the other side. So. Salamanca is, is closer than Cordoba. Yeah, yeah. You have plenty of traveling to do, right? Lots of yes. vacation time and lots of places to go. I hope you use all your vacation time to write more books, to do more research, and maybe you will. Um, at some point, uh, be able to come back and spend more time with us here. 
Yeah, I, I always love to be here. It's kind of, that is like coming home. Yeah, well, I feel the same way. And it was a, a thrill for me to see you today because uh, you deal digitally with people for a year and then see them in real life. It's <laughs> like, oh, it's like an apparition. So, yeah, the same here. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking the flight over here all the way and for uh, writing these books, for being such an intense researcher, a wonderful intellectual, a creative mind and for being a good friend to the Mises Institute, Philip Bacchus. I thank you very much. Thank you.